Time now for sports on SSP TV News. Welcome one and all to another Dave Day here on SSP TV News and welcome to Dave Seaman, the sports editor at the Standard Speaker who is busy over the weekend covering the Pennsylvania Women's Open Golf Tournament. Dave, huge event in our backyard, LPGA players, um, some on the developmental tour for the LPGA and it was someone on the LPGA tour who ended up winning the event, Alejandria Leneza and I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, but she's the big winner and Dave, it was in sudden death, it was a playoff. She also played for Mexico at the 2016 Olympics. We're talking about big names here. You got to witness it and see some of the drama unfold. What was it like? We don't get to cover a lot of major golf events. Uh, that, that's for sure. I mean, I, I, I was uh, pleasantly surprised at the level of players there and uh, in our, like you said, in our backyard. And uh, they did, they put on a, a, a great show for the spectators who showed up. Uh, the weather eventually got nice on Saturday, so that brought some more people out. And uh, the ending, you couldn't ask for a better ending because um, it went to sudden death. And sudden death, there are a lot of dramatics there. Uh, uh, the girl who finished runner up, she, she looked like she was in position to win, uh, hit the flag on her second shot of the first sudden death hole, tapped in for the birdie, and looked like in position to win. Then Alejandra comes back and uh, makes a, sinks a birdie putt of her own, does the same on the next hole, and um, she ends up winning the tournament. Yeah, what a finish to a great week that they had there at the Valley Country Club. And Dave, you described the course as immaculate. Award you don't just throw around in sports. You usually attach it to a reception, but it was beautiful. I was down there as well, so everything looked great. And what I was most impressed about, Dave, we went down earlier in the week. We talked with Kate Scarpetta. She helped organize the event, really was a major organizer with it. And she also competed in it. And I read in your article, she only finished like six strokes out of first place. It all went to support the Geisinger Health System, Systems Autism and Developmental Medicine Institute. So very cool event there. Dave, locally, Tamaqua softball, they make it all the way to the District 11 4A championship, and they came on strong in the beginning of the year. This is a young team. They kind of fell off at the end. You said they were playing some tough teams, but hey, and you maybe thought at that point toward the end of the regular season, hey, maybe next year, you know, they'll make a district run. They did it this year, and they, they almost won a championship. Yeah, uh, you talk about falling off, though. Like you said, they did play against some good teams, lost to Pine Grove twice. They're District 11 finalists themselves. Uh, and they get into the district playoffs and they have two comeback wins, two seven, trailing in the seventh inning in two district playoff games and coming back to win. Uh, it says a lot about your maturity, how you're able to overcome adversity. And uh, I think the Lady Raiders did that throughout the course of the year. They came up short against a very talented Bangor team who also won the district last year. Uh, so nothing to be ashamed of for the Lady Raiders as they move forward. Yeah, and that banger team, 23-1 and one this year. And some Penn State Hazleton um, softball news, then we'll get into some Penn State baseball news before we sign off at Penn State Hazleton. Four softball players named National All-Americans. Hazleton's own Samantha Varilla was named to the United States Collegiate Athletic Association's first team. She was tied for first in the nation with eight home runs, by the way. She's also an excellent pitcher for the local Lions. Um, also, Jerica Chorba from Bloomsburg. She managed, she made the first team. She finished with a 482 average. Also from Bloomsburg, Vanessa Michael was named to the second team. She had the fifth most home runs in the nation. And Mountaintops, Brianne Fetterman, also on the second team. She re reached base almost 50% of the time for the local Lions and had a perfect fielding percentage. So congratulations to those four players. Out at University Park, Dave, Sal Biazzi, um, junior pitcher for Penn State, makes the All Big Ten second team ERA of 3.48, and he pitched over 72 innings this season as a starter. Great year for him. Um, difficult season for the Penn State team as a whole, but now a lot of people saying he will be taken in next month's Major League Baseball draft. And that's something that Sal, uh, as long as I know him, he's been pointing toward that since he's a young little leaguer in the Hazel Township Little League. Uh, it, it's, it's a well-deserved honor. Uh, should it come, should he be fortunate enough to his, have his name called, uh, he's looking f uh, f forward to being uh, picked in the, in the upper rounds. Uh, he, he's working hard. He's at a pre-draft conditioning workout uh, stage of his uh, development right now. and. Uh, uh, supposedly, uh, it's it's going very very well for him. A lot of talk I hear that he will be a you know high draft pick. A lot of good things have been written about him uh, on different um, site websites devoted to baseball and prospects. And uh, it could be Penn State's first pitcher I believe chosen since 2012 in the draft too. So and he was he was definitely the ace of the staff for Penn State this year. Uh, he got to pitch every opening game of the series. He got to play against some big com big time competition teams that are nationally ranked teams that are still playing in the NCAA tournament, so uh, he's got a lot of experience, and uh, his, his velocity has gone up every year, too. He said that's something that he's been proud of, and he's been able to work hard, and that's something Sal's known for, and his competitive drive. And uh, his coach, Rob Cooper, said, yeah, you mix that competitive drive with learning how to pitch, and the, the sky's going to be the limit for him.
Yeah, he had 88 strikeouts for the Nittany Lions this season, and I did read in the release, Dave, that he played one of his best games against Maryland, uh, a very good team against their ace, who I think won Big Ten Pitcher of the Year, had a duel there, and I think they were tied, and Maryland ended up winning it late. So we'll see what happens with Sal Biazzi, and we'll also see what's going on with our local scene as the weather moves things around and the district playoffs continue. Make sure you're checking out standardspeaker.com, and remember us right here at SSP TV News.